Well, I think it's the Bulgarian nutrient. Sure. In, yeah. in poultry diets. Yeah, it's very common that no one mentioned fiber in the diets, even though, I mean, you can see the, the profile of certain type of breeds that fiber is not included in the requirements. Sure. So something that I have been doing, not only investigating in the, in the company, but also trying to understand the concept of fiber in the in the diets is to uh, the, the, is the application not only about insoluble or soluble fiber in the in the performance and the in the growth performance in the flop performance of these uh, of these animals and uh, the final result that we have to understand just by applying these these nutrients. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, where we discuss the latest in poultry uh, nutrition industry and research trends in approximately 10 minutes or less. Uh, my name is Sam Rocha. I'm one of the co-hosts of the show, I'm associate professor at, at Auburn University, and uh, joined today uh, by a, a friend from uh, Latin America, Juan Gabriel Espino, uh, who is going to talk about a little bit around dietary fiber. Uh, Juan is also going to be uh, joining us uh, here in the U.S. Uh, next week at the Arkansas Nutrition Conference. So uh, hopefully uh, anyone who's listening is able to, to learn more about the story, but we'll get a, a little bit of that uh, story today. So uh, Juan, thanks for joining and how are you doing? Oh, good morning. Uh, thank you. Thank you Sam. I'm, I'm just good. Very happy to be here and share with you this, this podcast. Good. Well, well, thanks. We look forward to the discussion today. Can you tell the audience uh, just a, a brief uh, bio about, um, you know, your, your background and kind of what you're up to these days? Well, I am uh, actually uh, the feed manager and nutritionist of a feed, ma- feed meal plant here in Guatemala. I work mm-hmm. with pigs and chickens. I have a master's degree here in nutrition at the University of San Carlos of Guatemala. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, I started working by uh, Two or three years ago, as an international consultant for enterprises or companies around the world. Okay, very good. So the feed mill that uh, you work primarily at now, uh, what type of poultry is it? Broilers, layers, or both? Uh, we we make both. Uh, for the company is work for it's uh, the core. Of the company are layers, mm-hmm. but we sell feed to other partners, and we have to work with broilers too. Sure. These third parties. So uh, with that, you know, you've got kind of a keen interest in the topic of fiber. So can you talk a little bit about, you know, what you're doing and, and how you're thinking about uh, fiber in, in poultry diets? <laughs> well, I think it's the Bulgarian nutrient sure. in, yeah. in poultry diets. Yeah, it's very common that no one mentioned fiber in the diets, even though, I mean, you can see the, the profile of certain type of breeds that Fiber is not included in the requirements. Sure. So something that I have been doing, not only investigating in the, in the company, but also trying to understand the concept of fiber in the, in the diets is to, uh, the, the, is the application, not only about insoluble or soluble fiber in the, in the performance and the, in the growth performance, in the flop performance of these, uh, of these animals and uh, the final result that we have to understand just by applying these these nutrients because i mean there is a very confused aspect that you have to because it, no no one mentioned probably in the in the in the nutrients profile but you have to understand that you have to apply it and they are it's, it's an necessary nutrient for a better performance of chickens layers broilers turkeys and whatever the uh, breed that you are working now that, that definitely uh makes sense so you know, obviously the ingredients that we're working with in the U.S. versus what you have in Guatemala or, or other companies that you've worked with in the past, uh, that varies. And that's going to have a big, big impact on, on dietary fiber content. I mean, can you talk a little bit about some of the ingredients in your region and, and how that impacts uh, soluble, insoluble fiber and, and potential differences there? Well, I think that, I mean, we... Central America imports all, all, most of the grain from the U.S. Sometimes, depending on the price, we import it from South America. But most of the grain we get it from the U.S. Uh, we can see here substrate of, of fiber like EDGS. Mm-hmm. But the, the, I think that the main difference that we have here, they are palm kernel meal that you eat. There is a 
a soluble substrate that we usually used here in, in the diets of, of Central America. And I think that it, that is the, the only difference. Then we have uh, wheat bran, DDGS, sometimes we have uh, um, these uh, beans, beans shells, I, I don't know the name, uh, I don't remember the name, the, the shell of the beans, so soybean meal. Yeah, soybean oil. Yeah, that is some of the product that we usually use. And uh, there are some concentrates of fiber that you are, that they are uh, as an additives that you start to see in here in the, in the market. For example, uh, concentrates of fiber, like sure. uh, lignocellulose, a concentrate of lignocellulose, or a pecan shell fiber that you, we usually have in the market. Not constantly, but <clears throat> certain times of the month, we usually use, have to see this, this, uh, this nutrient, this material, I'm sorry. Very good. So when you're when you're evaluating some of these ingredients as far as sources of fiber, I mean, are you, um, you know, I guess how are you defining that? And and I ask that because there's a lot of different ways. You know, historically, crude fiber has been the primary measurement, but we know now that's not very informative or and probably uh, misinformative or misleading, if anything. Um, so how are you evaluating the fiber content of these ingredients generally? I think that we have to understand uh, the Atari fiber concept because the Atari fiber concept is more uh, includes a, a wide range of or, or description of the backbones of the fiber, mm -hmm. and I think that we have to well, we we have to continue working with crude fiber, neutral acid detergent fiber, but we have to start including the concept of the Atari fiber. What I do, for example, here in, in my country, is that I have access to NIRS, NIRS that help me to measure uh, the content of fiber with these raw materials. Mm -hmm. And I give you a different profile of, of, of the content of fiber because I, I am starting to include the Atari fiber as a concept. So it's going to be, let's say that instead of using just three descriptions of nutrients, I'm including a fourth one nutrient that is the Atari fiber. And that will help, that helped me a lot to, to calculate or to model to formulate the concept of the Atari fiber and crude fiber simultaneously, because you know what is that, the classification of each, what including each classification, okay? So it's more easy for me to to, to get a, a, a sample, send it to the company that runs the years of fiber, and I take it back and I start to doing all my formulation. Makes sense. And so what are you looking for when you incorporate uh, fiber in the field, um, maybe from both broilers and layers? I mean, what are you seeing? What benefits are you actually seeing in the in the field, um, you know, beyond just uh, the the general impacts of fiber, what we see around, you know, say satiety and layer and kins or, or whatever? Um, what, what are you looking for? What changes are you hoping to see? For me, the, the, the main concept that I try to to get in, in this in this in this application of fiber in the diets is to modulate uh, satiety in the animals. Mm -hmm. it's, that is for me it's that's very important because uh, in the meal, for example, I'm in charge in charge. I have a team of course that support me, but I'm in charge of the finance of the of the meal. Mm. So if I start to modulate satiety of the of the animals, uh, I, I, there is, I can I can see the that very interesting effect in the in the performance of the flock because instead of having a a, a, a hungry flock in the in the farm, mm -hmm. I, can, I can have this um, satiety and have these flocks that uh, they are not asking for more food, so I can modulate the satiety of this type of with with fiber, for example. And if you translate satiety in in you monetize that satiety in the meal, you will be very surprised how, how can you have more savings just by modulating the, this, this characteristic in the diet. Of course, you can have more um, effects of, of fiber depending on what type of fiber are you including, if it's soluble or insoluble. If it's soluble, you can have an increased fermentation that is good, for example, that because you're going to, fermentation is going to produce your short chain fatty acids and this, um, this benefit, this metabolites will produce a lot of benefits around the animal, not only in the guts, but other in, in other organs. Um, and insoluble fiber has another characteristic that will help in the in the geese or in the crop, for example, because it's going to help you to retain um, to improve the retention time of of the of the geese, for example, improve the transit time in the intestines, 
or improve the retention time in the in the Zika, for example. So, sure. I mean, and if you um, try to understand the concept of hybrid and take it to the microbiome, you will be very surprised because you are not only feeding the animal and have this mechanical effect, let's say in this way, but when you start feeding the microbiome or the bacteria, then you are going to have more interesting effects over the over over the layers or the or, or the breeders that you have. So I don't know. It's a very interesting concept. I always tell the, everyone that we should start changing the concept just just to feed the animal. We have to start understanding that if we include fiber into a diet and understand what type of backbones are, are we including, what we, going, what we are going to see is that we, we are going to start feeding the microbes that we probably have in the, in the gut. And, as, and, and this, this symbiosis will give you interesting effects over the, the, the performance of different type of breeds or drugs that you have in the farm. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. I mean, certainly a lot of these um, theories have been around for a long time, but I think we're just kind of catching up in, in you know, production and in practice and actually uh, seeing these these concepts applied. So it's, it's great to hear that you're you're so open minded and kind of uh, ch trying this out. Have you ever uh, learned anything about fiber? You know, maybe a, a hard lesson learned uh, going too far to where you get to lower energy than expected, or is that uh, is that a, a threshold that you have to be careful with? Yes, I know that is very important because fiber will dilute you a lot of nutrients, not only energy, protein, because you, you the fiber is going to uh, use a, a space in the diet and it's going to dilute you all the nutrients. Uh, I think that depends on what type of what what are the application of fiber that you want to mm -hmm. to get. For example, of course, if, if you're going to apply the concept of fiber in broiler diet, you have to let's say decrease the the inclusion yep. because uh, it doesn't. I mean, this fiber is using in space of other type of nutrients, but that doesn't mean that you have to include fiber in, in broiler diets. Uh, I think that the best way is to understand what type of fiber are you including, uh, returning to the one of the quick questions that you asked me, is to understand the, the, the concept of dietary fiber, okay? Because in dietary fiber, you have a broad range of, of description. Uh, if you see the classifications or the description of acid, neutral, or uh, crude fiber, you only include hemicellulose, cellulose, and lignin. But if you start including the, the, the dietary fiber concept, you are including uh, the other substrate or the other backbones that are soluble. And that will make you more sense in the application and the quantity of fiber that you need to apply to get that better performance of the animal. So my recommendation is just to understand the fourth, the fourth concept that we have right now in, in fiber and, uh, try and understand how to apply it. Very good. This is uh, very interesting. I know you have, um, you know, we have a limited amount of time here. I know you're going to get more of the story uh, at the nutrition conference next week in Rogers. So uh, luckily I'm going to be there and, and look forward to uh, getting to see your talk and, uh, you know, really enjoy the conversation today. So um, thank you again for, for sharing with us. Okay. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for, for this, for this space. And thanks to the audience uh, for listening to another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Uh, we really appreciate it. And if you've uh, enjoyed the show, please uh, like or subscribe on the different platforms that you're listening to. And we look forward to talking with you uh, on the next one.